There are a number of methods in the thread class that you should know about, especially if you're going to go down to the level of operating with threads. But even if you're going to stay at a higher level, some of them might be useful to you. So inside of the Java API, we can look in the thread class and see the various methods that are in here. You'll see some of them are deprecated. We'll come back to those. Um, some of them in uh, Java, the things that would be in a companion object in Scala are labeled as static, which means you can just call them on a general thread. And one of those includes, for example, the current thread, which gives you back a thread object for the thread that happens to be running at that time. We'll talk about some of these and how we can use them. The first one that I really want to look at is one of the more useful ones if you are working at the level of threads, and that is join. Okay, so as the description says here, waits for this thread to die. So it basically blocks on the current thread until some other thread has finished. And you can also call it with delays, which tell it how long it's willing to wait. So I'm going to make a new app. I'm going to call it thread sum. The idea here is fairly generally applicable, but I want to use a specific example of summing up the values, say, in an array. So I have my nums, which is an array that we will fill with a bunch of random numbers. I'll make it big enough that maybe being parallel would work make it useful. That's probably actually not big enough, but it's good enough for our purposes here. And the idea is that I want to, to sum this up. Now, we all know from the previous videos that if I just stick this in a par for loop, so I have some var sum equals 0, 0.0, if I run through some loop that is a parallel loop and I add these all up, I'm going to have race conditions and the sum is definitely not going to be the right value. One way to do this correctly, though, uh, other than, you know, so we showed how we could use synchronize to get the correct answer, but then it's going to run very slowly. Another way is to give each thread a chunk of the work to do and have them each build their own sum. So we could make another array called sums. Let's actually go ahead and val num threads. So I can say how many threads I want. I'll go ahead and make it 12 for this. Sum, or how about 10 will be a nice round number for what we're doing. Sums is a new array that has num threads elements, and all the values start off at zero. And the idea here is when we're done, we can print out the sum of each of the sums. And then I want to add up each of these in separate threads. We won't have race conditions because each thread will be working on its own counter. So I need to create all of my threads. So we're going to make a new thread for each one of these override run gives back a unit and it should go through oops this should probably be inside of something that's going to count for me I could do this with a tabulate I'm going to actually go through a for loop instead I in one two num actually zero until make it easier for indexing num threads yield a new thread that does our work here what should it do well I'm just going to have it add up some subsection so for J in <clears throat> how about we do I times num threads or sorry I times nums dot length divided by num threads and we're going to go until i plus one 
times nums dot length divided by num threads. Let's make sure we understand that. So when i is zero, this is going to be zero until up one times the length divided by the number of threads. And then we're going to start at the length divided by the number of threads and go up to two times that, etc., etc., etc. We should double check to make sure that on the high end we don't run out of bounds. So when i gets up to num threads minus one, so this will actually become num threads, and that will actually go out of bounds on the last one there. So we need to make sure that that we don't wind up accessing that, and we can very quickly do something like this. And that should give me... Oh, Say it should give me an exception, except didn't it actually print it out zero? Um, what happened there? Well, let's try that again. Yeah, make sure. Yep, yep, still zero. We'll call one of these helpful little threading methods. Interesting. Pause for a full second. Oh, we never started our threads. Threads dot for each underscore dot start. I'm going to comment that out because this is oh, I put for all instead of each. Okay. That's an interesting number. Uh, it might actually be good to find out if we have the right value here. So we could just say nums.sum. Of course that's the slow way to do it, but it's it's useful to check our code. Hmm, those two sums don't look the same. And in fact, this is the number we should expect. We should expect something close to 500,000 because this is between 0 and 1 with an average of 0.5 and we have a million of them. Yeah, so clearly that number is too small. Let's put our little sleep in here. Um, that's too little of a sleep. A little bit more of a sleep. Those look like the same, almost the same number. Though these are doubles, so the order of the math could change the, the very end here. So we won't actually worry about that. We're just going to worry about like the first four decimal places. Those two are the same. Though this is a good in, uh, way of showing the fact that doubles are not infinitely accurate because these will always be different just because of the order that we're adding things up. But sleeping here just feels like a bad way to do this. What we'd really like to do is just before we print this out, we should wait and make sure that all of the threads are finished. Well, that's where this thread.join come in, comes in. So we're going to do a for each and join them all. So remember this join call pauses or blocks the current thread until everything else has, or until the thread that it's on has finished, and then it keeps going. So we don't have to arbitrarily find a sleep that happens to work some of the time. This allows us to know exactly when the, the threads are done. Um, so I'm going to stop here. We're going to come back. I want to make sure that you understand that we could do this a lot better with futures, okay, to, to make it clear that that there is an alternate way of doing this, and then we'll also introduce some of the other methods that exist on the thread class.